Hey, what's happening everyone? This is Ken, thanks for watching. In this video, we are going to talk about the book cover design for Ghastly Ghosts. In our previous video, we talked about the character design, so if you have not had a chance to watch that, make sure to check that out. And as always, you can follow me on rabbleboy.com, that's my website, and also I'm on social media at rabbleboy. Let's get started. <laughs> So the way I'm going to go about this is basically the same process that I went through as I was designing this book. Uh, typically when I work on a project, what I usually do is the character design process, which was in the first video, and then the next step would be working on the interior. And usually the book cover is the last thing to work on. But in this case, we worked on designing the character first and at the same time working on the book cover as well. Basically, I'm showing you guys the same process that I went through as I was designing this book. So the first thing that you try to figure out when you're working on a book project or any kind of publishing project is the specs for the book. So you're trying to figure out first the orientation of the book. Are you trying to do a portrait book? Are you trying to do a square book? Are you trying to do a landscape book? And if you're working digitally, what are the resolution for that book that you need to deliver to the publisher? So in this case, Ghastly Ghost is an 8x10 book. And if I'm going to create a spread, the spread is going to be 16x10. So that's two pages, 16 inches and 10 inch height. And the bleed is half an inch all around. So the bleed is basically the part of the book, the excess art or illustration that you need to create that's um, usually chopped off when it goes through the actual publishing process and printing of the book. So here's an example of what the bleed looks like for this cover. As you can see, I created the original 8x10 art, and you can see that red line that shows that 8x10 size. And I had to create uh, half an inch extra worth of artwork for the bleed. And in this case, you actually don't see the bleed on the left side because that is the spine. And eventually, we created uh, a 16x10 image that includes the front cover and the back cover. So I'll show that to you guys later. And since this book is to be delivered digitally, I had to deliver that in CMYK. Typically, if you're working with artwork that's just viewed online, it's saved as an RGB. But if it's something that's to be printed, it needs to be in CMYK. And for print, the typical resolution is 300 DPI. And, you know, to be delivered in Photoshop layered files. The art director uh, requested that I, that I create the art at 125% of the specified trim size. So for example, if I'm working on an 8x10 image, that I need to size it 125%. So that image then becomes 10 by 12.5 inches. Plus I have to include the bleed, so then it becomes 11 by 13.5 inches. And in this case, I actually created a 400 DPI resolution instead of the standard 300 DPI. So that gave it even more uh, resolution to work with. So if the art director or the publisher needed to do any tweaking or sizing things down or sizing things up or whatever, uh, that there's extra resolution to play around with. All right, enough with the technical mumbo jumbo. Let's get to the fun stuff. So designing book covers, there's something about it that I really like. It's kind of just trying to figure out a way to gather the main ideas of the book and put it into one image and place all the elements and the characters in a way that grabs the audience at first glance. So there's just something fascinating about that and just something enjoyable really about putting all that puzzle pieces together and creating a really beautiful and effective book cover. And the biggest thing that plays into that is the composition. So this is how you place, again, all your different elements, the setting, the main character, um, creating the intrigue on your cover. So, so being able to place all the elements is one of the biggest puzzles in designing the cover. And it's always a good idea to use uh, different guidelines. So one of the guidelines that's often used is the rule of thirds. And as with any of these guidelines, that's what they are. They're just guides to help you uh, improve your design. So they're not necessarily set in stone. So the rule of thirds basically says that if you have a page or an image, 
what you need to do is divide it into nine equal parts. And you do this by creating two horizontal line and two vertical lines. And wherever those points of intersections are in your, in your lines is where you would place the main point of interest. And there's something about it where it creates uh, an appealing image. And a lot of photographers use this as well. So let's zoom in here in this example, you can see the intersecting points right here. That's where the photographer decided to place um, the main character or the main focus point. The same thing with this image and same thing with these other images. So again, this is a guideline that you can use and play around with and see if it helps improve your design. And there's a lot more guidelines out there that you can look at as well. And I'm going to include some of those in our description in this video. Um, but that's all that they are. They're guidelines. And the more you look at them, the more you study them, they're just going to be second nature to you as you're designing uh, or working on your compositions. So as you can see here on our cover, I've created a rough outline of our rule of thirds grid. And it's not accurate, but you can kind of get an idea that our main character, Dave, is placed where the lower left uh, intersection happens. So in a way, I kind of did follow it, even though I wasn't really consciously thinking about it as I was designing. But to me, it just looked appealing placing him in that uh, position because it's basically just second nature. So the next step that I work on is creating cover sketches. And by that, I mean really, really rough sketches. And you'll see that in a second here. Here we have Dave and he's already placed on the lower left area of the page and you can see that he's holding his lamp the wind is blowing his scarf I already have the coal shed placed uh, across from Dave where he's heading towards that I already have the idea for the bird and the moon since it's gonna be at night and it's gonna be a snowy night so you can see a little bit of that the hill in the background with snow on it so most of the main ideas are already there and I also you can see behind the the coal shed I have the idea for the trees as well. And I made a second version. And in this version, I moved things around a little bit. You can see Dave is in the middle. And again, I created the moon, but it's on towards the top left area. I have kind of a tree line on the left side of the page. The coal shed is still in the same position. At this point, I'm still trying to figure out the style of this book. So is this book going to be a little bit more painterly looking uh, or is this going to be kind of the final product using you know ink design and by that I'm thinking more like a Edward Gorey cross hatching style again since it's going to be a spooky book it still needed to be a children friendly book so I added the little mouse characters in there to kind of give it a friendlier um, approachable uh, feel okay so on the third version I flipped things around a little bit and you can see Dave is now on the right side and he's approaching the shed which is on the top left side and behind the shed I kind of I've created an ominous looking tree right there so kind of giving the tree more of as a, as a character in this book not just um, a backdrop to it and I also changed the shape of the moon from a circle to a crescent and the text the title is now place in a different position. So that's one of the things that you have to look at as well is the placement of your main title and the re uh, book credits. So as you can see here, I have it here towards the bottom and I have it here uh, towards the top on top of the moon. And that could also be problematic being that the text goes on top of an art. So especially in this case where you have a dark background, so a dark sky and then all of a sudden you have a bright moon. So how does the color of the text um, bleed from a dark background to a bright background? So that could be an issue. How are you going to address that? But at this point, I really was not thinking about that yet and that would be something that I would have to problem solve later. So the next step is to get all those designs and then send it to the publisher. Or in this case, you're typically assigned uh, to work with an art director. So you send it to that person and then they review the designs and then they give you feedback uh, saying, you know, I prefer this look or I prefer this direction. Um, and, and that's usually how it works for most of this process. So you're not just working by yourself. 
And that feedback that you get from the art director or the publisher is really valuable. The way I look at it is that you're working as part of a team, the publisher, and that you guys are all working together to create the best product, the best book that you can make. So it's always a good idea as a designer, as an illustrator, to have that back and forth relationship with the art director and the publisher. So we fast forward a little bit here and af after several back and forths with the art director, I've started to finesse the design a little bit more and approaching much closer to the final product. And at this point, you can see that we've actually picked a character design look that we want to go with and as well as the different elements. You can see that I've added the snow in the design. I still kept the moon right in the middle and the text is still there. We've firmed up the look of the bird. We've incorporated the mouse. And here you can still see a little bit of the lake, uh, which I think was on the first design. And the coal shed is right there. And you can see the tree line in the background. So slowly but surely, we are getting towards the final look. So one of the things that you will notice still is that this has a softer look. And I received a comment from the art director that they wanted me to try to d design this in a way where it looks like one of my previous artworks. And that illustration is actually this one right here. So this uses more of solid lines to outline the characters and the different uh, elements in the book. And they wanted me to try to use that same technique in my initial design, which has the softer look. So my next task is to merge these two ideas together and present them with kind of a different look for the cover. So with that in mind, I redesigned my initial sketch. And as you can see here, I used a lot more black lines, a lot more cross hatching, and um, it has a little spookier and even creepier feel than before. And that's one of the things that I was worried is trying to find the balance in um, using the, the black line technique but still keeping it as a children's friendly book, which is the main target audience for this book. But I was still in the experimentation phase of this cover design. So I was trying different things and actually going to the extreme at one point just to see um, what it would look like. And then we can slowly pull things back. So here I have another version on the right side of the screen. You can see I pulled back all the dark areas. And instead of using the inking style, I just went softer and used color and you can see that my mouse his look changed a little bit and instead of being on the rock it, it went to a log and instead of having the lake I went to a bush and, you, and the tree I tried doing a softer look to the tree by giving it leaves instead of the creepier look here the moon has pretty much stayed the same and the clouds I gave a gave the clouds a different look as well and uh, you can add, you can see the snow in this version as well. And there's less detail on the ground. It's on this version, you can see rocks and um, grass. Here you can just see more of the snow. During this part of the process, I am working closely with the art director, uh, submitting a design, getting feedback, and then revising it. Early in the process, as I explained, I usually de design a bunch of different um, ideas, uh, submit that, and then get feedback. But as we funnel down and narrow our ideas down, I work with them closer and closer until we get to that final look. So as you can see here, we have uh, the previous version that I created on the left side and another version here on the right side where I changed the trees instead of just having the cutesy uh, trees, I made them, I kind of turned them back to the creepier look, but this time they're not as chaotic because in the previous version, the trees were going back and forth, left and right. They just go straight up and they look uh, more uniform. So some of the comments in this version, you'll probably notice is the moon. It was a challenge to place the text, the title of the book on top of the moon. So we moved it to the top right corner. I also removed the leaves from the tree to clear that area up and to make the coal shed bigger. So I did that and I also made it spookier by adding uh, shadows that made it look like it had teeth. And also to try a different look for the bird. So I tried my Edward Gorey bird right here to see how it would look. And if you'll notice, I added a second mouse. And I think one of the comments was the mouse kind of in the original version looked more like a rat, probably because of the tail. 
So it made them tinier uh, to make them look less like a rat and added two of them and the tail doesn't have the lines across it now. Another version where I tried another bird and I actually removed the scary shadow fangs from the coal shed right here. And you can also notice that I removed the snow. So those are probably comments from the art director in this version. And here's two more versions where I think the only thing that I change is the look of the bird. And we pretty much, I think, stuck to the one to the right with the exception of the wings where we made it transparent and used color for the wings instead of just being an all uh, black bird here. So now that we pretty much figured out the look for the cover, the illustration, it's time to move on to the color. And since I haven't done any artwork or coloring for the interior, I really uh, had no idea what the look of this book would be as far as color. So I had to go back and experiment with different kinds of coloring techniques and different kinds of uh, coloring palette and try to figure out the direction that we wanted to go. So here's my first attempt at coloring. As you can see, I have the purple sky. I have more of a brown uh, color for the ground. I have some snow in there. I've colored Dave. And I think you'll notice that the color for Dave pretty much stayed the same from my first version to the last. And I have the uh, these circular lines that create the ray of the moon. And I've, I have the tree, which is kind of a brown look as well. So again, this is me trying to figure out the look and feel of the cover, which in turn would actually dictate the look and feel for the rest of the book. So here's another version where it looks like I've given the coloring a bit more of a softer look. So the tree looks more airbrushed here. Uh, same goes with the snow and I almost have this fog or mist in the background. So the sky still has a little bit of a purplish look here. Um, but you can kind of see that it's getting closer to what the uh, the final book would look like. So in this one, it looks like there's more purple throughout the, the entire image. And there's also, uh, looks like a grainy type of texture that I've applied here. So it's all different types of experimentation to see which works and which one doesn't. So one of the more important and critical feedback that I received that kind of changed the direction of the look of the cover was uh, these examples that the art director sent over. She wanted the cover to look more blue. So when you have a picture book that's spooky or has ghosts in it, usually it could get branded as a Halloween book. And that's not what we want for ghastly ghosts. So we had to avoid anything that had purple in it or orange. And we wanted to move towards this blue look. And credit to her, she added this blue filter to the artwork that really gave it that pop and turned the, the design to what it is today. So that's why it's really important to work closely with your art director because oftentimes they have an ace under their sleeve to, to make your artwork move up to that next level. So the next step is to figure out the type or the text for the main title of the book. And as you can see here, we wanted to give the title a little bit more flair to it by adding a ghost as part of the text. And I have three different versions here that I submitted. Um, and we eventually settled with the one in the middle. And um, the font part of the text was actually done by the art director. And I'm pretty sure she tried different versions of that as well. So one of the things that I was not anticipating was actually to create the back cover. I mean, I should have expected it, but it was not part of the initial design is what I mean. So uh, the publisher came back to me saying, you know, let's think of some ideas for the back of the book. So now I have to come up with um, concepts for the back. And here's a few of them. You can see here, I have this version where Dave is, uh, I think, sitting on a couch. There's a ghost looking at him from uh, behind the window. And then we have a version where it's an exterior. It looks like Dave's truck is going up the hill. We have a version where Dave is driving up to the house and you can see the cat. And here we have the tree. So this is kind of what the final version is where you have the tree 
and you have a fox. So it's a continuation of the entire uh, landscape, as you can see. Uh, and obviously we've picked this one and I had to work on making a continuity with this tree and making sure that I match the same look of the front cover to the back cover, which sometimes can be tricky when you're working on a particular design and now you have to remember the techniques that you've used in that initial design and replicate that and make sure that your other design matches it perfectly. And with a snap of your fingers, we've got the final cover. And this is actually the dust cover of the book. You can see here I've completed the front and the back designs and they've added actually this part which is the spine. It shows the title of the book and author name, illustrator name, some little ghost characters here. And we've got the fold out on the front which has a synopsis. You've got the fold out in the back which has the author bio and the illustrator bio. And they were able to pull out some of the elements as well from the interior of the book to add it here. So it just adds a little pizzazz to the dust cover. So I think it looks really well done. All right, well that wraps up this video. Thanks again for watching. I know it can run a little bit long, but I try to pack in as much of the information as I can. So I hope this is useful and informative for you guys. Make sure to follow me on social media at Rabbleboy and also on my website, rabbleboy.com. And make sure to click and subscribe in this video. And if you have any questions or comments, just post a comment below and I'll try to get to it. And uh, make sure to watch out for the next video where we talk about the interior of the book. All right, thanks again. Thank you.